What is up, YouTube? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. I'm Mark, and I'm here to talk about New Comic Book Day for the 21st of April. But before we get into it, check this out. All right, guys, there's a lot of good books coming out this week. Not as many as the past couple of weeks, but still some good stuff. So before we see what's in my pull box and some other awesome titles you need to check out, be sure to go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. At the time of recording this, I'm only about 17 subscribers away from the 700 mark. That means more stuff to give back to the community. I've got some awesome books as well as some CGC stuff that I'll be passing back out. So if you don't want to miss out on any of that, subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for when that giveaway drops, and it will be right around the corner. All righty. So this week, I do not have nearly as much coming in my pool box, but there are a lot of uh, books coming out. So let's go through the list. I don't have them in any specific order this week. There just wasn't that many, and time is of the essence. So first up that we have in my pool box for sure is Flash number 769, and this has got a $3.99 price tag. This is the second issue since Jeremy Adams has taken over the title, and that last issue was really cool while he tried to renounce the Speed Force and it went south. He ended up being the last speedster with any power, and it looks like he is needed to heal the speed force. And not just that, we had the first appearance and current continuity of the Gold Beetle there, who has first appeared in the Future State stuff. So she was a really cool character. I'm excited to see her wild and crazy antics brought into this and how she plays a part in it. So really looking forward to that one. Next, we have Justice League number 60, and this is the second installment since Brian Michael Bendis has taken over the title. The cover looks awesome. We have Superman going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Black Adam, a.k.a. Shaz Adam. And um, uh, this is a very misleading cover, I bet. I think that he's going to be brought onto the team because we saw in that last issue there was a new foe called Brutus that came in and was kind of causing chaos all over. And I think he's going to be like the reason to bring Black Adam into the fold. We know we have a new movie coming up soon with The Rock. So they're going to want to forefront Black Adam and just – put him more in the limelight, bring him to people's attention and draw that interest to him. So I'm excited because we're probably going to see a new dynamic with that character. He's classically a villain in, in more modern times, more of just like a, I don't want to call him an anti-hero. He's pretty much just a dictator of his own country and just don't get in his way. But uh, he's an awesome character. I'm excited to see how they're going to play with him. We also had Naomi added to the Justice League roster. So there's some new players on there. It's a really wicked team. I'm really hoping that Bendis can do something good with it. He has not been held in high regard in uh, past years with his run on Superman. So maybe he can turn things around with this Justice League. Be sure to give it a shot. Next up from uh, Image Comics, we have Radiant Black, issue three. Now, the first issue I thought was hot garbage. The second issue I thought the total opposite. I love the second issue. It, it really felt like firepower, but just in a different genre, more in a sci-fi genre compared to like a kung fu genre. But uh, I love the dynamic with him and his dad. I love that uh, he kind of toe-to-toe with his equal opposite, I guess, Radiant Red over there. But uh, it was a, kind of a misunderstanding fight, and uh, he was trying to the life of him to get this guy to kind of communicate with him. But he's still struggling. I'm hoping to see him kind of start getting in his groove or start working on getting in his groove, kind of experimenting with his capabilities and what he can do. And I hope it kind of starts getting into a little bit of – what the orb is, where his powers come from and all that. I hope we don't have to wait too long to start down that story path. But all in all, I think uh, Higgins has done a great job with this. It's got a uh, $3.99 prize tag. I don't think I mentioned it, but Justice League has a $4.99 prize tag, and it's got the Justice League dark backup story, which is awesome. We have Merlin showing up on the case, running rampant, and uh, we pretty much saw the end result of all that in future states. So this is like the beginning of it. And I do keep pointing this out, but I do not believe that any of these stories that we saw the end result in Future State that are kind of seeing the beginning of now, I don't think they're going to go to that inevitable conclusion. I think they're going to all deviate and have their own uh, own style ending or whatever. But, yeah. So, yeah. Justice League, Radiant Black. We also have Superman Red and Blue issue number two. Now, that first issue I wasn't blown away by. Uh, these are anthology-style books. We have multiple writers, multiple artists doing multiple stories. This one has got five stories in it, and John really is not touching it. So I'm very excited because I hate him writing Superman. Awesome writer. Enjoy his next Batman stuff. Hate him writing Superman. But this one we have uh, Chuck Brown, Stephanie Phillips, Jason Howard, Vendetti's doing a story. So it's going to be awesome. Uh, it's not just Clark in this one. We're going to get Val Zod. We're going to get Cyborg Superman. We are going to get Clark. Uh, so we're going to be taking the space in some of the stories. So this seems more like well-versed or 
more versatile book, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, where that first issue seemed like just an unnecessary introduction to who Superman is, because we know who he is. And then you have John Ridley doing a story where he doesn't know who Superman is. So it was kind of weird, but whatever. He teach their own. Next up from Image Comics, a Skybound book, we have Ultra Mega number two. This is uh, just an awesome book. Crazy stuff going on. I just was able to read the first one. I'm kind of just all over the place from it because it was insane. So Ultra Mega number two is uh, definitely going to be higher up on my reading list this time. It kind of got pushed to the back burner. And then next up we have from Boom Studios. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. These are expensive. This is a $7.99 book. They are square bound. Uh, the writer, artist, James Heron is doing an amazing job. Reminds me so much of uh, Daniel Warren Johnson, writer, artist, crazy cool style, uh, amazing use of colors and everything. Super violent. Next, we have from Boom Studios, Ryan Parrott's Power Rangers number six. And of course, this is following the Omega Rangers where Mighty Morphin is following the Mighty Morphin team. I'm still like, every time I read an issue, I'm like, okay, I'm enjoying this title more. And it kind of keeps going back and forth. Last week's issue of Mighty Morphin was amazing. It was good. It wasn't like a game changer, but it was such a well-rounded issue. It was just really good. And as you see from the cover, we have Astronema on the scene. She was uh, brought in in that last issue. Awesome character, total wild card. I don't know how they're going to uh, kind of deal with her in this. She doesn't seem like the classic use that she was done in the show and in previous uh, installments in the books. So I'm really excited to see how she plays into it. You see we're still in that weird – Wild Wild West town with all the villains of lore are all hanging out and uh, whatever. Ecliptor is in it. She's in it. Let's throw in the dynamic. So that's all I have for my guaranteed pool. I know. Super light. But that's okay. This past week was super heavy. I even added a statue and all kinds of stuff. But anyways, there are other books coming out that we should talk about. So we have, as Chris the Comic Vet calls it, the franchise, ASM number 64. And from the cover, we don't see Spidey in that goofy new suit. So that's pretty good. Now we got him out of the goofy suit. Now if we could get him into a new rider, we'd be on the right track. And then we have Tom Taylor, who's taking over Nightwing, taking his second installment at it. That's one that I've been heavily referred to jump on that I have not yet. Next up, we have from Rom V, we have Catwoman issue number 30, as well as TMNT number 116. Uh, from Marvel Comics, we have Alien number two, as well as Carnage, Black, White, and Blood number two. And I, I did pick up number one for that just on a cover by because it was a Gleason cover, which I'm enjoying those webhead variants. I did not pick up either one of these for number two or that for number one. Just, uh, just I don't know. Next up for the Star Wars fans, we have Dr. Aphra number nine. And for all you horror fans out there, we have Haha number four. We also have coming out. Uh, Zack Snyder's 101 Dalmatians, as well as the Black Knight Curse of the Ebony Blade number two, which I'm excited to see that this does not have a king in black trade dress on it. So maybe we're finally getting a little bit away from all that crap. Started out good, we just, just by the end of it, just wow, who cares? Next up, we have the Old Guard Tales Through Time, issue number one. So we're getting a new Old Guard book. So my introduction to the Old Guard was with the Netflix movie with Charlize Theron. It was awesome. It was so cool. I've never read any of the books, but I'm contemplating picking this one up just to check it out because, dude, I really enjoyed uh, the whole Eternal Warrior style vibe with them being a mercenary team and all kinds. It was just really cool. So I'm thinking about picking this up and giving it a shot. Not sure yet. But then we also have the Mighty Valkyries number one. So we know that the Valkyries had their own had their own story for King and Black. So they're spinning out getting their own story. And this is number one. So if you enjoyed that and everything, you might want to give this a shot. You see you got Hella on the cover. There's a lot of stuff going on. And then next up we have from Rom V and Boom Studios, a brand new issue number one. It's called The Mighty of uh, the Many Deaths of Lila Star. So with this, it's like the Hindu pantheon of gods, and uh, death is fired right on day one of the book there. So it's going to be interesting. And I did save this one for last just in case uh, people weren't able to save for the end of the video. I didn't want you to all be plagued with it, but there is one King and Black tie-in, and it's for Avengers issue number something, let's see, 45. Cool. So those are really all the ones I wanted to spotlight. There are a lot of other ones coming out. I really didn't even want to talk about this one, but the Batman Fortnite crossover zero point issue number one starts this coming week. So if you're a Fortnite fan, if you're a Batman fan, this book's made for you. And that's exactly what every comic book reader has been begging for is another Batman title. Next, we have 
Uh, Post Americana number five is coming out. Recount number four, a brand new number one Godzilla Monsters and Protectors. So somebody out there is jumping on the Godzilla train. I feel like they're a little bit late now that the movie's been released for two weeks, but oh well. X Force number 19, Captain Marvel number 28, Eternals number four, and a brand new X Men title called Way of X number one because what also we were all begging for is another lackluster X-Men title. So if you weren't getting your fill on lackluster X-Men titles covering shelves, have no fear. Another one is on the way. So that is all I have to talk about this week. Like I said, a lot of books and that is by no means all of them. There's still more out there. So be sure to double check all the shelves at your LCS, get out there, support your local shops, get as much as you possibly can. And, um, uh, Join me every Sunday night at 9 p.m. on my show for At Week's End, which is a spoiler-filled look back at This Week in Comics, where we break down and talk about all this cool stuff that happened this week. And if I'm missing something that you're picking up, that's the place to come and talk to me and tell me all about it, as well as my good friends that always join me. And if you want to see what my hot pick for this week is and why, be sure to check out the Comic Bet. Every Sunday, he drops a collab video that we do called cool, Two Cool Guys, Two Hot Picks, where we both pick out one comic that we feel that you should definitely look at picking up for the week. And also, as always, I want to thank Paul and Donna at the Augusta Book Exchange. That is my LCS. That is where I get all my comics. They are the keepers of my comics, the guardians of my pool box. They always make sure that everything I'm looking for is right there waiting on me safe and secure when I get there every Tuesday and every Friday. So that's it, guys. Be sure to hit that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell. Leave a comment. Let me know what you're picking up this week. If I missed anything that you just think I have to be checking out, let me know. I'll, be, I'll do my best to check it out and let you know what I think. And again. I'm Mark, but we are Legion.